<laughs> okay, I'm getting filmed by my uh, wife and my kid here. So anyway, this is, um, they said they would hold the camera for me, so, uh, or the phone. So this is a book that I've just been reading, uh, Yaris Varoufakis, uh, Talking to My Daughter, A Brief History of Capitalism. And um, it's not a very big book. Um, you could probably read it in a, about four or five days. Um, it took him apparently about a week to write. And why would I have normally, I would not normally have picked up a book about cap, the history of capitalism, economics, anything like that. Not a subject I know very much about, never something I've ever studied or looked at at uni or anywhere else. But um, I really like this guy, Vanis Varoufakis. I remember seeing him when he came to speak to Norman Osborne. Norman Osborne was very, you know, straight up wearing a suit and this guy turns up wearing a leather jacket and he just seemed very casual, very confident and seemed in a funny way down to, quite down to earth. So, um, and I've heard him speak a couple of times after that and so when I saw this book, I thought, looks, okay, interesting. Uh, when I read it, very pleasantly surprised about economics. Um, I always thought economics was a really dry, boring subject. But the way that he writes about it, he says that, look, if you can't explain economics in a way that a child would understand, it means you don't really understand the concepts yourself. And that's exactly what he does. So he imagines it as a conversation between him and his daughter. And she asks a question about why there's so much inequality in the world. So he talks about economics from that angle. So he 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 just, he he talks about things from a very basic level, like what the market economy is, you know, how, you know, you need to have uh, an agricultural surplus before you actually can build an economy. Uh, he talks about the way the word, even the word economy is, oikos is from the Greek, uh, meaning uh, household, nomos or something, means the, uh, means laws. So it's like the gov laws that govern the economy, uh, the, the household. But what he really shows is that there's no such thing as real laws. There is, it's not a science. It's more like a belief. It's more like a faith. It's more like assertions. And so what he really thinks is that econ the economy is too important to leave to economists. It's like leaving your welfare in the hands of theologians who actually don't have a clue. Uh, and, he's, and that's essentially what he comes down to. So he... I mean, he, there's so many wonderful things that you learn from this. Like he talks about how, you know, you need to have this agricultural surplus. Once you start having this agricultural surplus, that then leads to things like a state, theology, military, all these things. That's where it all kind of started from. Um, it didn't just come up out of nowhere. And he doesn't describe... Uh, economics as a very, it's not a dry subject, he uses things from popular culture like uh, movie plots like The Matrix, um, Blade Runner to describe how economies develop and how they manifest in terms of how societies actually become. And that's not something I thought about, the idea of the machines becoming more and more advanced, you know, artificial intelligence, I think that was something we talked about before and how it becomes, you know, and what where that can lead to. So it's almost like science fiction, which, is, you know, which was amazing because I'd never really thought about things that way. And just like, you know, bodybuilding is like taking the body to a limit. Science fiction, I can see, becomes like where you take the mind to a limit. And actually, when you can imagine it, you can see it in the future, it can actually be, it can actually be built. So that was really amazing. And he talks about, you know, how the things you build in the economy actually enslave you. And so he talks about Frankenstein's monster. So he brings lots of literary things into it. And he, he talks about how ideas have changed. Um, there's a really good bit where he talks about a play called Faust. And Faust was a guy, Dr. Faust was a guy that made a pact with the devil. And he gave, the devil gave this guy 23 years to do whatever he wanted, so he had whatever he needed, money, riches, fame, women, all that kind of thing. But at the end of it, he wanted his soul. And at the end, in the original uh, story about Faust, 
you know, he, he gets taken away to hell at the end of it because he's voluntarily gone to hell by giving up his soul, his most important possession. And the idea was that this was the idea that you were taking on usury or interest and that's that was seen as a very evil thing. But then he shows how the, when the novel or the story was reworked into the 19th century, Faust actually um, is able to basically do good works and he ends up going to heaven instead because by then interest was seen as something that was necessary. And um, Faust was reworked so that he goes to heaven because he does good works at the end so he redeems himself and he was showing how even like even today when you repay a loan with interest it's called redemption of the loan uh, which I didn't, didn't even know so even the language he describes how it's very much in uh, it's about faith and these ideas that have come from belief systems rather than anything else so I got a fantastic book really good um, it really makes you think about things uh, in a way that you wouldn't normally. And if you've done economics before and it's part of your um, training, then you might think, no big deal. But I, I, I love the way this guy discusses it. He even talks about the start of currency and how, you know, he gives the example of a concentration camp where people use cigarettes as a currency and how the currency changes and why you even need a currency in the first place. Obviously, going from you know something that has uh, experiential value and to something that has an exchange value. That was another thing. You know, he makes you think about the idea that things have an experiential value. So you know, you go into a forest, you you know smell the air, you you know feel the the leaves crushing underneath you. You 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 know you you have the experience of a forest. But there's no exchange value. But you, as soon as you put a gate on the door, you pay five pounds as an exchange value. And how, if that is all you look at, that eventually leads us into a certain destruction of the environment and all that kind of thing. So he really goes into that and he gives a good example of blood transfusions. Most countries where people pay for blood transfusions, they actually don't get that much. But where it's about the experience of going blood transfusion, and it's done for free, you actually get much more in. So it, it's he, he really breaks a lot of stuff down into the experiential value of things and the exchange value of things and just all these kind of concepts that I hadn't thought about. Really good. I, I, I think it's a good one to give to the children. Uh, I know somebody on the book review uh, group is, has given it to their daughter to read. It'll be interesting to see what they thought of it. Um, it's one I would be definitely giving to my kids. I certainly learned a lot from it. I would definitely get this Vanis, Yanis Varoufakis talking to my daughter, A Brief History of Capitalism, well worth uh, getting. I um, thought it was fantastic. Anyway, I would give, definitely give it an 8 out of 10. Okay, hope you get it. Bye.